Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have this arrived in the post. And in here is something rather nice actually that you guys will be interested in, I'm sure. So I was sent this to review, and I actually refuse quite a lot of things that people ask me to review, but some of them are very relevant to this channel, and this is one of them. So what we have in here, it's a handheld oscilloscope. This is from this brand, FNIRSI, and they asked me if I would review this item, so they sent me this free of charge, but I'm not actually being paid to produce the review. We'll have a quick look at the oscilloscope, and then we'll have a look at the price of this, because this is not an expensive device. So here is the oscilloscope itself. Now let's have a look to see what the specifications are for this and how much it costs. So of course it's common to show people things and try to give them a hard sell and then give them the price. But I'm going to do this the other way around because this handheld oscilloscope is around $70 so I'm with free shipping. And if we have a look at this, we can see the price. That's in euros, shipping to me. Sandball told me to tear it on it. And this is the scope. So the specification claimed by the manufacturer is 110 megahertz, 50 mega samples per second. But then he says 100 megahertz oscilloscope. But I'm happy to go with 100 megahertz. Firmware can be upgraded. This is a single channel oscilloscope. But it's also a handheld oscilloscope, so this is ideal for when you're working on site. And it's also ideal for working on things like switch mode power supplies where there are high voltages present, because the oscilloscope is isolated from the mains. Okay, so up to 400 volt measuring voltage. We're back to 110 megahertz again. It's got a test signal built in, okay? And lots and lots of information about it. But we're not just going to look at that. Let's look at the oscilloscope ourselves. Let's see, in particular, is this any good for repair work? You see what we have then. This is a low cost oscilloscope with 110 megahertz bandwidth and isolated so we can use it on high voltage equipment. It's nice to see it comes with a, shall we say, proper oscilloscope probe. This looks much like the oscilloscope probes on my bench oscilloscopes. Yeah, seems very, yeah, nice click on there, nice well-made scope probe so it's nice to see that with a budget oscilloscope we actually get a decent scope probe with it or what looks like a decent scope probe i'm sure it'll be absolutely fine it's times one times ten as you would expect nicely we also get another probe with crocodile clips on this is what i expected to find with a budget oscilloscope and not that and yet we have both we have a little charger lead, micro USB, and a power supply, and a manual was just a quick flick through. This is all in English, okay? So let's try the oscilloscope, and let's, let's power it up, let's see, is it charged? I guess this has a battery in it, and let's use it, let's try it on a few things. I'll compare it with my bench oscilloscope, and then we can come to some decision about it. Is it good value for 70 euros? Okay, you can take that from there. First of all, is it charged? No, it's, oh, yes it is. There was a little light on the bottom which didn't come on, but the oscilloscope has come basically ready charged. The first thing I'll mention is the display isn't particularly bright. It says the battery is 100% charged, so we have it there, let's zoom down a little bit and have a closer look at it. And there we have it. I'll just have a quick look around the menus so I can just familiarize myself with this and then we can have a play. 
I've had a quick look through the manual. This is fairly simple to use. So I have it switched on. It's connected to my signal generator, which at the moment is running at 10 kilohertz. And we can see the frequency here, 10 kilohertz. The size of the waveform peak to peak, 1.37 volts and 50% duty cycle, which is what you would expect. Now to get the waveform to display if you're not seeing a waveform initially i'll just show you how to do that let me change the frequency i now have it set to 100 kilohertz so if you have an unknown signal to display the waveform you just hit the auto button okay and that will find it so it's 100 kilohertz now we can see the peak to peak voltage once you've done that you can alter the amplitude with the millivolts and volts buttons. So this takes you down, volts, millivolts takes you up. Okay, that's the maximum. The time base you can adjust with just the second and nanosecond buttons. So seconds, nanoseconds alters the time base. And if you want, you can just go back to auto and it will set itself back again. So that's the basic use of the oscilloscope. We have an AC-DC button here which sets the coupling between AC and DC. We have a measure button which puts a lot of information down the screen there. You can see it so we, we can view the duty cycle, the mean voltage, RMS voltage, maximum, minimum and such like. So that will display the data down there that's the measure button with the triggering that's fairly simple as well so you press menu and you can use a little joystick up and down to select the various options so you can go to trigger we've got auto normal uh, rising and falling edge so we can set the trigger mode here to what we want okay just press ok to select it menu to get rid you can adjust the position of the waveform vertical like so. Again, auto will center it again for you. And if you hit the select button, you can now set the trigger voltage. So you see I'm moving the trigger voltage up and down. It's triggering on that voltage as I go outside of the waveform. Look, it loses the trigger back in, okay? Stop will stop the oscilloscope so sampling and now you can Look through the waveform yourself. Okay, using the sideways arrows. Hit stop again, it'll go back to normal sampling. To use the single trace mode, basically we need to set the trigger point at the level we want. I will set it here, towards the top of the waveform. And now I will switch the signal generator off. So we now have no signal. If we now hit single, it will wait. It says here, wait in green. And it's now waiting for a trigger, which is for the voltage to pass that point. So let me switch this on and see what we get. Okay, well, in actual fact, we got a big burst of data. And we can now look at that. So we can actually scroll across. We can expand it, for example. So this is what my signal generator did when it first powers up. Okay. It effectively gave a lot of garbage. And then after a short period of time, no doubt, it settled down. So that's how we can actually scroll through the stored waveform. Okay. It then cut off again, Luke. And then the sampling stopped. So... That's roughly how much data I could hold in there. Okay, if I hit stop now, it'll just go back to normal and look, the thing is actually working now. So that's how to capture the occurrence when you first switch something on, for example. Now let me test the oscilloscope at the higher frequency. So this signal generator will go up to, I believe, 25 megahertz. And then I have an RF 
signal generated which will go well above the 100 megahertz so we can have a look to see how well the oscilloscope works at higher frequencies first of all i will turn this signal generator up to the maximum okay this actually goes up to 10 megahertz so it says on the screen let's have a look so we'll hit auto yeah it's got it and it's displaying 10 megahertz so it's working it's a little bit jittery maybe but it's certainly working at 10 megahertz but i'd be interested to see how that works at higher frequencies let's just set the trigger a little bit lower down in the waveform it's there the auto moved it so it does give us a waveform so that's fairly simple to use let's try the oscilloscope on my rf signal generator i can get a much higher frequency signal into it and let's see how it works at up to 100 megahertz or even beyond let's try it okay we can try this now so this is my signal generator which goes up to 255 megahertz it's still a bit of a work in progress it needs going into an enclosure but we can switch it on so we have 7.2 megahertz and if we hit auto we have a waveform now we already know or you will do if you've seen the previous videos with this it doesn't give exactly a sine wave at the lower frequencies because this is a clock generator rather than a sine generator as such and as we get to higher frequencies it looks more like a sine wave so we can alter the frequency but we can also go up onto different bands i think these are amateur radio bands somebody will tell me so we have 10 megahertz which is a 31 meter band we have 11.78 yeah it's telling me how many meters these are amateur radio bands 22 meter band 13.6 meg 14.1 15 17.6 21.5 and that's the 11 meter band or 27 point 0.015 megahertz this display doesn't actually flicker by the way it's just the camera the refresh rate so we have a waveform on there and we can hit auto and again it'll set it to a nice waveform for us we can alter the amplitude we can alter the time base okay so let's go up some more 28 meg 50 megahertz and he's still giving us a nice display at 50 megahertz you would expect that to be the case again auto <laughs> it's found it and he's actually telling us it's 49 point well it's, yeah it's moving around a little bit but it's saying it's sort of 50. let's see if i even move the trigger point maybe that actually gives us a better more stable reading so i think that if it's select yeah i'm just triggering a bit higher in the waveform there and it's saying 50.5 i mean this may not not be absolutely accurate itself but yeah i think it's averaging about 50. We, but we want to go more than that yeah let's see 100 megahertz auto now the auto doesn't seem to work at 100 megahertz let's see if i can trigger it manually so hit select again yeah there's the waveform up so it's 100 megahertz it's kind of losing it a little bit but it is showing it okay yeah you can see the positions changing so that probably is as far as we can go with this and still get a display out of it whether exactly you could say it is a hundred megahertz scope you may debate but if you wanted to know if a frequency was there if it was oscillating to 100 megahertz this will certainly tell you that it is and in the case of repair work that's often what you want to know what if we push it up more than that well 130 megahertz and i think it's really yeah it can't display the frequency anymore so 100 megahertz is as far as it will actually go i'll just check the readout here at 100 megahertz i wasn't looking at it before i really need to do that okay so i'm back to 100 megahertz and it's actually reading 100 megahertz it's just telling us that let's just try to open smaller increments rather than actually as we did before 
I'm not sure if I can actually change the scale of this. Let me press a little button. No. Oh, yes, I have it. Okay. So, 108 it's reading. There's 110, just over. Right, and now it's getting really quite unhappy with that. Let me see if I can actually set it to 110 exactly. Okay, so I'm at 109. It's getting very jittery about it. Uh. Seven. So in my opinion, the last waveform you can really display is 106. It certainly will go above the 100. 110, I think, is a lot of wishful thinking, but for a 70 euro oscilloscope, I have to say this is performing at least as well as you'd expect it to do. I hope you agree with that, guys, especially for repair work. In repair work, we often don't need an accurate measurement instrument exactly. We need an indicator to show us whether a waveform is present or not. And the frequency of it, okay? And this will do it. Let's watch the display. Okay, yeah, at 110, it definitely loses it. 109 is the limit, in my opinion. So far, so good, then. This appears to be able to run basically up to its specified value and still give you a frequency readout and a voltage readout. So I think for the cost of this, you'd be unkind to it to complain for the price for the banks for the book, yeah? But let's try this now, real life. So let's have a poke around the motherboard with it, and let's also have a look at switch mode power supply, and then we can have a final thoughts. Another nice little feature with the oscilloscope, it has a little stand that clips out, and you can stand it up. So it's now at about 45, 50 degrees angle facing towards me. I can see it quite clearly. Obviously, the camera doesn't pick it up well at that angle. Another thing I do like about this little oscilloscope is the user manual. So, of course, we have a picture of the device. We have the specifications, a description of the on-screen menu, the user interface, what the various buttons do. It then goes into an operation guide telling you basically how to use the oscilloscope. But what I do like after that is this little section, the common problem analysis. So why is there no waveform, for example? Only one line that doesn't move, and it'll explain why that might happen. Uh, about the charging indicator, various other things you may find with it. And these are often not really problems. This is not a troubleshooting guide. This is more to do with why you see certain things on the screen. For example, why does the test waveform keep shaking from side to side? It explains you need to adjust the trigger voltage. So if you're a beginner with oscilloscopes, this is really quite nice, okay? For example, it explains how you get it to run up to 100 megahertz. Then, even nicer is this section. So this is commonly used circuits and test methods. How to measure a battery or a DC voltage how to measure a crystal oscillator. Uh, this means MOSFETs, basically, how to measure pulse width modulation signals. So on, uh, this is about the built-in signal generator, how to use that, how to measure mains voltage and see the waveform, uh, power ripple, inverter output, power amplifier audio. So you can see this gives you a lot of examples of where you would use an oscilloscope. It explains how to use it. And I think that's really, really good. I have to say, 10 out of 10 for that, personally. It doesn't just tell you what the buttons do. It actually gives you a very good idea how to use it. Let's try the oscilloscope on a few real-life examples. I have a motherboard here. 
I've put the oscilloscope where you can see it better on the overhead camera, so it's maybe a bit tricky to see the motherboard, but let's see, for example, if we can check whether the VRM is running. So this is the voltage regulator module for the processor, or at least part of it. We'll get onto the junction between the high side and low side MOSFET, and then let's switch on and see what happens. Okay, so we have something. Let's press the auto button. And there it is. So it's telling us it's running at 294 kilohertz. The peak to peak voltage is 27.8 volts. You can see that. And the duty cycle. So that is effectively the VRM driving the inductor coil. Okay, so that worked well enough. Let's now try something else. So we'll have a look at the BIOS and let's see whether we can see when the processor reads the BIOS. Okay, hopefully you can see that clearly enough. These are the BIOS chips, main and backup. And the chip select is on pin one. So we should see the processor read the BIOS when it boots up. I'll just hold the scope probe again, see this is just an auto mode. Oops, not the camera. Let's switch it on. Well, yeah, there's something there. Can you see it? So that is the processor reading the BIOS. Let's hit the auto button. Okay, now there's nothing there. I think it's just seeing the ripple. Let's try again. And then we'll try and capture the waveform. Okay, so we'll try it again. This time I will hit auto while it's reading the BIOS. And there you can see. Okay. Now let's try setting the trigger mode. So this will do a single trigger when it reads the BIOS. To do that, I hit this cell button. I'm sorry you can't see it clearly. And I can now move the trigger voltage down. Okay, that's where the little yellow arrow is. That's the trigger voltage. Let's now set the oscilloscope to single. So I'm just going to hit the single button. Go back to the BIOS. And it's now waiting. It says wait, yeah? In fact, it triggered when I switched it off. So let's hit single again. Wait, and let's switch it on. Okay, and we've got something there. We've got a trigger, yeah? So it's now read that. It only triggered the one. So we should be able to scroll through the waveform let's see so yeah I've hit cell again so cell switches between setting the trigger point the little yellow arrow and you can use it also to move the waveform hit cell again so you can see we've captured the waveform there of the BIOS being red okay we can scroll through it so maybe we get some more a little bit further in we can also adjust the size of it or to the scale there it is okay so yeah I actually just captured those events okay it looks like this oscilloscope has a fairly small memory it won't capture a very long waveform but it's 70 euros you know and it's certainly telling you whether or not it is reading the BIOS Let's try something else. Let's see if the real-time clock is running. So that's the little crystal. Hopefully you can see it there in the inset window. Let's have a look. This should be running in standby. Yes, it is. 32.7 kilohertz. We can see that. So we can see that the crystal is running. Peak of 90 millivolts. Okay. Let's look at a few other common situations where you may want to use an oscilloscope. So for example, to read the crystal frequency on the motherboard or the GPU or to see if the crystal is actually oscillating. So this is a 25 megahertz crystal. Let's start the motherboard. Okay, and you can see there, yeah? If we go to auto, didn't actually get it, interesting. Let's try it again, auto. Well, it's sort of trying to get it, let's go again. Ah, oh, it took a few times, 
but it has got it and it's jittering around a little bit but it's saying 25 megahertz or very close to it so it certainly will tell us that the crystal is oscillating now according to the manual you should use 10 times when you're looking at crystal oscillators and i'm a one time so let's change that so i've changed this now to 10 times i've set the probe to 10 times you have to set both let's have another look so i'll just switch the motherboard off we'll go back to the crystal oscillator and we'll try again and it's got it straight away yeah that's probably because i'd already tried to find it let's switch the oscilloscope off we'll switch it back on okay I have noticed by the way, I've been using this now for well over an hour and it's saying that it has a full charge still. Once again, I'll just switch off. We'll go to the oscillator. And this is, it's actually started that time. And it found it straight away. It must remember that setting, I guess. So it's quite clear, in fact, it's less jittery. Now we're on the 10 times setting, which is what it says in the little book to use when you want to look at crystal oscillators. And that's, to me, it's fine we know it's running let's look at a couple of other things another thing you may want to look at then is audio signals so this is the audio coming out of my pc i've just attached the ground clip to the oscilloscope so i can look at the signal on the connector hard to keep it in a shot but that's what i'm doing so i'm just connecting the scope probe there we go and it's obviously picking that up i'll hit the auto button yeah yeah there it takes a few attempts by the looks of it and it gets it obviously it can't give you a frequency reading because the frequency is all over the place when we have music playing but that is certainly working fine if we want to use this to look at audio signals we can do so i can alter the uh, time base slightly yeah, there you go okay so i'm quite happy that is very usable if we want to trace audio signals and amplifiers and such like yeah and let's look at one more situation where we're likely to use an oscilloscope this is a switch mode power supply out of an old satellite receiver and we can use the oscilloscope to look at the drive waveform from the portsmouth modulator to the transformer this power supply just has the mosfet built into the controller chip it's not separate so this chip is directly driving the transformer and i just checked the data sheet and the output is on pin six here which we can see actually goes through a little inductor coil and then this is into the primary of the transformer the little inductor coil is this one now if you were to use an oscilloscope for this sort of measurement you have something of a problem because there is no safety ground in this circuit or in this black area effectively here the ground we need some reference to measure voltage from is the negative end of the main smoothing capacitor but this negative end is connected directly to the bridge rectifier and via the internal diodes in the bridge rectifier that negative end of the capacitor is alternately connected to live or neutral backwards and forwards at 50 or 60 times a second so you cannot attach any grounded piece of equipment to here that includes most bench oscilloscopes usb oscilloscopes anything that was attached to your computer because that's grounded so if you were to attach ground to here and switch it on you'll blow the fuse you might damage the bridge rectifier as well and you will probably trip out the earth leakage trip depending which can react the fastest but to measure the voltage on the output we either need to connect the ground of our oscilloscope if you like to the negative end of this capacitor or we need to use two probes which i showed how to do on the previous video whereby we can connect 
one to measure the voltage on the ground pin, one to measure the output, and we use a maths function to subtract one from the other. Now, the previous handheld oscilloscope I was using had a metal chassis, so you could not safely attach it to this type of circuit, but this one is like a, a silicone sleeve over a plastic body, which means you can attach it to a device like this to hot ground as long as this is not plugged into a charger for example the usb is not connected to your computer or something grounded if it's isolated like this you can use it now there's a couple things you need to be aware here we can put the ground clip onto hot ground okay but this is effectively a high voltage it's just our point of reference the oscilloscope will protect us from the high voltage if we grab hold of it but this connector is metal and this connector is connected to there i'll just show that to you we'll take a multimeter on continuity range and i will connect from hot ground to the metal okay we have continuity the upshot of this is it's safe to take the measurement but not to touch this while you're doing it. It's probably best not to touch the oscilloscope much at all if you can get away with it. So let's try this. We're on hot ground and I need to connect the oscilloscope probe to the output of the chip. The easiest place I've just found is to connect it to the inductor and it's safer to clip the probe on if you can when you're doing this type of measurement it's best to keep your hands as far away from it as possible this is not dangerous but it is inherently hazardous if you don't know what you're doing if you understand what you're doing then you're fine do this but just make sure you know what you're doing one other thing we need to just bear in mind before we do this there could be high voltage pulses on the output of the IC. It's connected to the coil, there'll be back EMF, there'll be spikes. This oscilloscope can handle up to 40 volts on the input with the probe set in times one mode and it can handle up to 400 volts in times 10. So we need to set the oscilloscope to times 10 and then we need to set the probe to times 10 as well. So I've done that and now we can switch this on and we can see what happens. Well, with something is going on, yeah? Let's hit auto and let's see what it does. Well, it's just trying to find the signal. So let's see if it can. I think it's found it, but it's struggling to do it, probably because the pulses are coming very intermittently. Okay, let's have a look if we can just alter the time base manually. Alter the voltage manually. Let's see if we can see what's going on here. So that's on the highest voltage setting. That's on the slowest time base, I think. We'll just go to it. Yeah, one second for division two. That's on the slowest time base. Let's hit auto again. Let's see what it does. Well, I have to say that the scope is having a little bit of trouble triggering on this. It can see there's a pulse there. You can see it yourself. Yeah, intermittent pulses. Let's see if I can trigger this manually. So we hit cell button and we move the trigger point up or down a little bit. Okay, I'm getting somewhere a little bit with it. We can increase the voltage, one volt. And I have to say, I'm still going to see a stable waveform with the power supply doing this. Let's see if it will show us a waveform. I mean, we can see it's there. I will say that much. But 
the scope does seem to be struggling in these conditions to show us that waveform. Let's try pressing single and get it to trigger one. So let's see if that helps us. Right. I've hit single, so it's now triggered on the next pulse. Yeah. Now can we see it? Yes, we can see it now. So that's the actual waveform that we have there. Okay. And we can clearly see it now. So the oscilloscope can pick up the pulses coming out of the chip. It just struggles to do so in auto mode, okay? But it can do it. I've now attached the load to the power supply. I can just show you that. So I have power resistor here. I have two of them. Each one is 20 ohms and they're 15 watts. And they're wired so I can use them in series to give myself 40 ohms or in parallel to give 10 ohms or I can just have 20. So at the moment I'm just using one resistor, which is 20 ohms. The power supply output is 12 volts. So a little bit of ohms law will tell us it's drawing 0.6 of an amp and a little bit more of ohms law will tell us we have about 7 watts of power, 7.2 I think it was. So we have a load on the power supply. That should cause the power supply to drive the output continuously. Let's see if the oscilloscope can pick it up. So we'll switch the power supply on. And it's seeing something, yeah? Let's hit the auto button. Now it's found it. So we can, when we have a continuous waveform rather than bursts of waveform, we can actually find it. Let's see if we can adjust the trigger to get a stable display. So, yeah, the little arrow is showing the trigger point. I've moved it into the tail of the waveform there. Let's alter the voltage a bit as well. Yeah, so we can now see the whole waveform. And that is triggering quite happily, and we can see it. I'll switch it off before the resistor gets too hot. Well, and there it goes. One other thing I just wanted to show you, I mentioned it earlier, if we go into the menu, we also have a built-in calibration option. So if we go to uh, calib, which I think is down, uh, up, and we t it tells us to remove the probe. So we can remove the probe and we hit OK. This will take a little bit of time, maybe a minute or something, but this is calibrating the scope, different voltage settings. We can see it's changing the settings on here, and that's also quite nice. So while it's doing that, let's sum up. There are a number of things I really like about this oscilloscope. I was very open-minded when I got it, and I will be quite truthful. I thought, 70 euros, 110 megahertz? Yeah. <laughs> Pull the other one, yeah? But I have to say, it actually performs, from what I can see, in the tests I've made, to its specification. 109 was the best I got out of it, 109 megahertz on a sine wave, but I don't think we're going to argue between that and 110, and often they call it a 100 meg scope. For 70 euros, yeah. It worked in every real life condition that I put it in, so those were seven, eight different scenarios that you really would use a scope for in repair work, and it did the job. Another thing I really liked is the fact that even though this is a very inexpensive device for what it is, it comes with a proper scope probe. Times 1 times 10, this is really nicely made. It's as good as the scope probes on any of my other oscilloscopes. That I really like. The instruction manual, I really like. If you are a beginner and you've never owned an oscilloscope before, this will help you a great deal in how to use it in various scenarios that you'll see here. This will really help you to get started with using the scope. Yeah, 10 out of 10 for that, and I don't think anybody here would disagree with me. 
So, there we have it. Would I recommend this for repair work, which is what we do? Damn right I would. And that would suggest for hobbyist work as well. Okay, it may not be the most accurate instrument in the world. I haven't really tested it against any references. But when you are doing repair work, generally what you want to know is, is something working or is it not working? You're not normally concerned about the exact millivolts or microvolts or the exact frequency or quite exactly how accurate the sine wave is drawn on the screen yeah you want to know if the oscillator is working if the pulse width modulator is working if the bios is being accessed all the other things i've just shown you if the vrm is running has the mosfet got any drive on the gate that's what you want to know yeah and this does that a hundred percent you've seen my videos guys i'm usually quite pragmatic about stuff when i review it I'm very open-minded, but on this occasion, if you haven't got a few hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars or more to spend on the bench oscilloscope, which yes, you'll get two traces or four traces, yes, you'll have more features than this has, but if you haven't got that money and you've got $70 to spend, then I honestly don't think you can do better than what I have in my hand here, unless somebody tells me different. So right now, guys, this one is going to get my recommendation and this I would be very happy to use for repair work, to take on site with me. I can use it on high voltage equipment. I can connect it to hot ground. I can do all those things. The battery lasts for ages from what I can see and it's doing me proud. Okay, guys, enough said, I think. See you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.